South Acres. I love the music. The Greens. No, stop. Hip. No, stop. We got a sound Real hip hop. All new 93.7 The Beat. On 93.7 The Beats. My name's Ashley. This man over here messing up already. Hey, man, this, we this, good <laughs> this is our second interview. Number June, two. you supposed to be a genius, right? I, I think I am. And now he messing up the hey, flow. Anyway, I'm but y'all. Genius in music. <laughs> Welcome, my homie June James, y'all. What do you do? H-Town, I'm in the building. June, you're a genius. That's Bro, a lot of people don't know that you're from here. I know. Like, I what, put it in their face. What area of town, though? I'm from Acres Homes. I'm from the north side. Acres Shakers. Ain't no fakers. <laughs> no cat takers. All Ain't no fakers. Day. But you live in Atlanta now, right? Yeah, I live in Ellawood, Georgia. You know, 20 minutes outside Atlanta. So, shout out to the A. You know what that makes me think of? What it make me It's going to be super B-side. Is Crime Mob had a song called Ellenwood Area on their album. Bro, I found that out <laughs> when I moved out there, bro. I was like, what? This is this a whole song about this yeah, area? Yeah, Ellenwood Area. It's that real, was hard. It's, yeah, it was hard. I just heard it like last week. I've been saying it for two years. I just heard it last week. Yo. So the first time we met was at South By yes, earlier this earlier this year. Then we met at no. Then I saw you at, in L. A. Mm-hmm. Randomly yeah, at our at our making moves. Yeah, like at our other station you show. We both working. Club me up too. Looked out for me too. I appreciate you. Oh yeah, yeah. We were both working. Oh, let's tell that story. So we were both working and networking, and then I look over to my side. There's a lot of influencer type people back there. Thanks. So there's like loving hip hop chicks over here. Right. And, yeah. All that <laughs> and, makeup on. And all like athletes and stuff. And then I turn and I'm like. Is that fucking June? And I'm like, yes. how the hell did you get over hey, here? Man, like, I be making my moves, man. Yeah. I just know how to just move and shake, man. Move and shake. Stick and move. But that's why I mess with you, though. I respect you because you're like me. Like, we're always out working. Yeah, like, I saw you doing the relief gang stuff. That was yeah. hard. I oh, thank the you. in the water, man. That's I mean, hard. my brother Rogers, he asked me to come out. So yeah, Much love to Mr. Rogers. And man. he drove. So yeah. <laughs> that was, yeah, Rogers is a good dude. Rogers that was the biggest thing. For a long time. Um, but he... We'll get back to Rogers, but when I saw you in L.A., I happened just to be around my homies, uh, my friend Arnold Taylor, who's the baby's manager. I was like, hey, have you met June the Genius? Yeah. And made that connection, but yeah. I want something to come out of that so I can me be in too, the video. Man, me and you both, and, and <laughs> when, it go, when it goes down, it's going to go down. When it goes down, got to give you the shout out, man. Got to yeah. give you that props for that, man. And I, if, we, if we get the plaque, got to give you a plaque, too. Yes. Facts on me. I was not a part at all of, of Put a Date on It, but... If there's another song that comes out with a baby, Ashley needs that plaque. All right. Because I still haven't got a plaque yet. I have not, I have oh, not yeah. one we plaque make that yet. Happen. We so I need to make the first one very special. But Goals. let's do a little, if you don't know, I'm sure you're familiar with this tag. Um, the songs we play on our station right now are Put a Date on It, you produce. Yes, ma'am. Yosemite, you produce. Yes, ma'am. We can go back. You did. The, one of my favorite songs that I've, it's older, mm-hmm. is Don Tolliver and Dice, oh, Hold It yeah. Still. Yeah, hold I was still. listening to it randomly because Dice my homie, and then I heard your tag. I was like, this nigga done made everything. Yeah, I've, been, I've, I've been in the game for a long time. I'm young still. Yeah. I'm 28, but I've been doing this since I was like 17. Yep. You know, I, I knew Dice way back, in the, way back when. I knew he was going to be a star. Like, Dice used to come to my house and vibe with me at my house back in Harlem Clark when we stayed there in college, my college days and stuff. Mm-hmm. So, I just it's good to see him doing this thing. Same thing with Maxwell. Me and Maxwell came up together, too, and it's just a whole local scene and yeah. just watching him, you know, prevail through all the stuff and just getting to where you're getting to is just a good look and it's just, you know, confirmation that, you know, everybody's doing their thing and on the right path. See, I tell people all the time because you're from here, so yeah. you probably had the opportunity to meet them before, but t- yeah. for me to be here for a year, I came, like, at the perfect time. You did. During, like, a storm of yeah. just... It's like we graduated, <laughs> man. Yeah. That's what it really would feel like. Yeah. Watching everybody shake from Meg to, to Dice to Don Tolliver um, to um, Maxo, even the Sauce Factory, just watching everybody just come up just from seeing where they was at before mm-hmm. and just being a peer of theirs, it's just dope to see everybody getting that success that they deserve. Now, you said your guy who's on the Hit Cartel with you did a Megan song? Lil did, Jew. He did. Lil Jew. Lil Jew's on the Hit Cartel. Remy yeah. Elise on the Hit Cartel. Uh-huh. Um, I got other producers. Um, uh, Rando's a producer that I'm cultivating and, you know, you know, grooming to take over next two after us. But, like, I got a whole team of producers. I'm kind of like the Gucci man of producers out here. I Gucci? On, yeah, All right. I, I, put, I, put, I put on a lot of people. I ain't saying I put them on as in, like, I'm just – there, but I just try to provide opportunities and provide a whole infrastructure and like an atmosphere for everybody just to get their roll off and get their get their shine on. And they're all are they all from Houston? Uh, no, nah, Jews from um Dallas. Okay, shout out to Dallas. <laughs> and um, uh, Randall's from Houston. Remy's from um, I think Corpus or something like that. Okay, but he stays in Houston. It's all Texas. Everybody's in Houston. It's all Texas. <laughs> it's, all, it's a Texas thing. Yeah. Yeah. Something that in our last interview we kind of asked you about, I guess a little business of producing because that's that's a whole different industry than like rapping i swear and i asked people on twitter i was like yo june's coming in like what are your producer questions because i don't know okay, okay, yeah. <laughs> like what, what do y'all want to yeah what do y'all want to know 
Um, one question we had last time we didn't get to ask you was the battle to get your tag on a song. Yeah. Because like Yosemite, your tag's not on it. Yeah, but that was the only problem I ever had. You um, know? And it was kind of funny. Every other song, like the songs I got coming out, my tag's on everything. Mm-hmm. And Yosemite's actually the one, no, two songs. I, I did Baptize the Future okay. on The Wizard. My tag's not on there. Yeah. Which is crazy. But as long as I get paid, I don't really be tripping. Yeah. But um, it was funny when I um when I got the song back and I was like, man, where my tag at? Because my tag's at the very beginning of, the, of Yosemite. It was originally on the original beat. And then they go hit me. Sycamore was like, Man, the song's gonna be a smash, man. It's like putting a bumper sticker on a Bentley. I was like, damn. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but you know, it worked out. You know, it, was, it ended up being my biggest record up to date. You know, yeah. no platinum and you know, it's still doing numbers. Yeah. Yeah, I'm blessed. You but know? you even see like so let's say the baby, you mm-hmm. know, obviously he does all his stuff with Jetson made. Yeah, and his Jetson, tag, like you're just boy. yeah, you're used to it. You're yeah, like, man. Jetson made another yeah. one or whatever. Is it that big of a like compromise if they are like, hey, we don't want to put this on here. You're um, like, eh. I just, it just it depends on how you know where your name goes. I mm-hmm. feel like them people didn't uh, in Travis Camp didn't know, not who I was necessarily, but like you know where I was going or where I was headed. So maybe they just <laughs> slept on it. But I feel like we did another record because I got called the other day by his manager Busy. And Busy was like, "Man, you got much with bunch of stuff with Travis and keeps sending this pack." So hopefully they put my tag on because they put tape tape keep tag on the sicker mode. Yeah. So I mean, like I guess it's about clout. So it's like part think, of the song too. Yeah, it's like, exactly. Take fuck me. <laughs> So yeah. I feel like, you know, it's about the clout and stuff. But I got a lot of stuff coming out with a lot of big artists, and they love my tag. Like, yeah. 2 Chainz and yo, the other day was like, because I want to get him to do it. You know, like, you now Weezy got the drop from Future mm-hmm. and stuff. I want to get a drop from a big artist, too. So I told 2 Chainz I wanted a drop from him. He was like, man, I ain't going to lie, but I love your tag. So I, just, I guess it depends on the person that you're working with and where their mind's at when it comes to the record. Yeah. But as I'm, long as I get paid and the business is done. Good, I know. As long as the bag, the, cut, the yeah, check gets cut. Shit, yeah. You know. What is the... um. Uh, who was it? It was Tay Keith and two other producers. Uh, Tay Keith, uh, Hit Boy, and one other guy. I just don't remember the name off the top of the head. And they all put their tag like back to back on yeah, a song. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah, something like that. Is that common for y'all to like collab okay. like that and do that? I, um, the the rule, well, my rule is my team rule is if it's more than four producers on the track, we ain't putting a tag on it. Because oh it's, yeah. You can't have this person, this person. It's just too much going on. Mm-hmm. The maximum is three. You know okay. What I'm saying that's what we rock with, but um, I'm working on a tag for our team. We had a tag before, but it's kind of outdated. So I'm coming up with a whole new hit cartel tag that when we do do big collaborations, we can just use that and it can just stamp the whole mm-hmm. thing. But me being the boss and stuff, I'm probably gonna still put my tag on. So. Yeah, yeah gotcha. <laughs> like, we still branding one on one out here. <laughs> got a brand, man. Did you see? Um, there is a thing that me and Rogers put up from our friend Mo Beats, who's Big Sean's DJ. Mo Beats is really yeah, up, our guy. Detroit. And he um, he said, imagine. Asking someone you don't know, like, put me on. Yeah. And it got, me and Rogers both put it up, because we get that all the time. Like, people, they don't want to work for it. They just want oh my God. The, the shortcut to the cloud. That's, that's how my DM is. Exactly. So and we said the same thing. We're like, that's how it's, like, for both of us, for him as a DJ or an artist, for me, just artists trying to get on air. Yeah. But he had a lot of response and people kind of, like, going at him. Like, you're supposed to help people when you're in position. Like, what's the process for you deciding, like... Who gets your attention? Why did you sign those people you have on Hit Cartel? Um, just based like, off of talent and work ethic. And uh-huh. just, you know, I mean, a lot of times when you deal with somebody, you fall in love with potential off the rip. So usually the potential. And if I see myself in you, I definitely want to help out. Yeah. Because I, I really came from nothing. I've been homeless. I've been shot at. I've been shot people. I've been through every kind of situation, tumultuous situation, to get to where I get to now. So when I see somebody struggling, I, I got a good heart, man. It's just um, I wear my heart on my sleeve. So when I see somebody, I be try, just trying to help as much as possible, especially from my city. But you also gotta have grind with it, you know. So mm-hmm. you gotta have something shaking. Like a lot of people be DMing me, check out my music and do the stuff. But it's like, man, if I hear about you the right way, meaning that you can go out and do the networking, going to these events, meeting people, and doing you know your due diligence as an artist or as a producer, I'm gonna hear about you. and We are gonna run into each other the right way. And I'm gonna pay yeah, attention. And I'm yeah, pay attention. But people, a lot of people don't understand that. You know what I'm saying? And I, I've been on both sides. I remember um, DMing Rogers back in the day when I was growing up, mm-hmm. getting ignored and stuff. But I had to. Put work in, and, you know, and sometimes it's just you got you got to put actual track, you know, track record together for people to actually you know want to message you because it's so saturated. It's hard to weed out who's exactly real, who's not, and people don't really realize that we're in a microwave society where everybody just wants instant gratification, instant success, and they don't see what's going on behind the scenes. And everybody's putting up, the, everybody on Instagram, on Twitter is putting up the highlights, mm-hmm. not putting up the struggle. They're not showing you, oh, I was broke this year, I was doing this, no, no, they just seen. Chains and mm-hmm. whips and the chicks and the, you know it yeah. comes with the game and so people don't really be knowing it takes a lot of work behind that but you know I just weed out the the bullshit by just peeping gang keep my ear to the streets exactly and just working watching how people working out and sometimes I I test people I put them in situations 
where I'm going to see if they're going to break a fold because you got that tough skin for this shit. Exactly. You know, that shit, be tough. Exactly. So if you can't make it through that, you know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna I'm not here to baby you. you. Yeah. yeah. I'm not going to baby you at all. See, there's two things I have to say about that. One is when we open this interview, we're talking about last time we saw each other in L.A. Yeah. You are an established producer and he's still out there networking yeah. in LA like so why would y'all expect us to like put you on to this? Yeah, like, what do y'all think this is? like why are we uh investing into ourselves yeah. and you just want to reap the benefits yeah, and like, then, like a lot of artists be <laughs> dropping bread behind stuff but you gotta realize that you know relationships are worth more than money and like I really try to build relationships with people you know what yeah. I'm saying and not just like get your number and then I'll see you again I'll check on you you know what I'm saying pull up on you you know what I'm saying just Relationships are just they just take you far. Yeah. And then when it's time when it's when you do have that time to showcase what you got going on, you gotta take advantage of it. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? When you when they do put you in the studio with certain people or they do give you certain situations that can take you to the next level, you gotta take advantage of that. And show yeah. and show and you know, show and prove. I was gonna say the second part of that is something you learned and we talked about it at South by when I interviewed you the first time, is we understand the importance of consistency so even if we're in la and you saw arnold once yeah. or whoever once i'm gonna make sure i'm at revolt and then i'm yeah, at for the grammys and i'm at that like that's where the investment comes everyone just sees you out here like oh they at the grammys but you don't see me back here yeah, like you don't know why I'm here. exactly you just, you just <laughs> like, clout. like i said yeah you can see this for a look and it's like nah i'm not here to and sometimes bro i go to places and stuff and people don't even know i'm there because i don't i ain't into taking pictures i'm just now getting used to that because i'm i'll be so Focus on just pulling up, yeah. networking, getting the, the numbers I need, emails I need, and pulling off. Exactly. And just, yeah. you know, taking them, you know, building off of that. But right now, I got to focus on, you know, building content. And because I'm at that point right now, where I got to brand myself better, build my content up. Because, you know, like you said, some people don't know how, where I'm from. And some people don't even know my face. Because mm -hmm. I'm a good looking dude, man. And I'm really <laughs> fresh, man. So. And I got, you see this Fendi bag on me? You see this Fendi bag with these <laughs> shoes on my feet, man. We're going crazy, man. And I'm really blessed. So I just, I, that's where I'm at in my career. I'm just trying to take it to another level, you know. And that's why I've been, I'll be in the gym. I'll be reading more. I'll be just, you know, trying to do better as a man, period. Because I know the next level I'm trying to go to is going to require a different level of myself. Yeah. So that's where I'm on right now. But I'm you know, big. the funny part going back to like, us talking about putting your work in and people recognizing who you are. Absolutely. The first time, I always knew your tag, but I didn't know your face exactly. or who you were. Exactly. But the first time I heard someone go on about you was Rogers. Because yeah. when um, Jermaine, who works for Epic, yeah. who's Gotti's a and yeah, yeah, my homie, yeah, yeah. he sent us put a date on it. Yeah. I played it for Rogers, and he heard your tag. He's like, oh, that's June. Like He, he went to TSU's from at Houston. And that was the first person to make me like, oh, okay, so like Rogers respects this person, knows this yeah. person, so let's. And then we met at South by Southwest, yeah, and been helping, just Rogers, been popping. Yeah, Rogers <laughs> been around. Me and Rogers been, you know, quick tight for like a long time, mm -hmm. like, like ten years, man. Rogers an OG. I really look up to him, like, as far as just how he carry himself, how he handle business, and I, you know, I call him for advice all the time. Yeah, and I got a couple management deals on the table, and he, I called him, and he just gave me game, and you know, I fuck with Rogers. Shout out to Mr. Rogers. DJ Mr. Rogers. Yeah. Now you went you went to TSU, right? I did, man. First of all, what's in the waters? You, Megan, Maxo, who else came hey, out of TSU? Man. Who else came out of TSU? <laughs> I don't know, man. I think that's about I ain't saying that's about it. You know what I'm saying? But right now that's who who's shaking yeah. right now. I don't know. It's just like I said, it's just hard work, man. Mm -hmm. Real hard work and just, you know, TSU, you know, I don't know what to call it, bro. It's just a different vibe. Yeah. Different vibe up there. You know, it's an HBCU, so you know there's a lot of us up there. Mm -hmm. Moving and shaking and stuff, and you know, people who want to do stuff, they're gonna make it happen. So, was your move to Atlanta? Was it obviously Atlanta's like the Black Hollywood? Was yeah. it just to further your career, or do you think you could do the same thing in Houston? Or you had to move? I had to move. Okay, infrastructure is different out here. Mm -hmm. the, um, there's not a lot of people giving game out here. It's only a select True. few. True. Yeah. Um, and you know, I don't know. Every time I come home, I'm reminded how ass backwards shit is sometimes. <laughs> just like just, just period. So, yeah. um, and um, I feel like. <laughs> You gotta, you know, you gotta go out there and learn shit and bring it back home. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? That's what I'm doing. Like I wanna make Houston the black Hollywood, but I know it's gonna take more than just me. It's a while. You know, you know, everybody had to leave. You see Meg had to leave, Maxwell had to leave, yep. people had to leave and come back and bring it to the city. But, you know, I, I really went out there to further my career for shit show. Yeah. Absolutely. Because I knew I couldn't do it here. Because I didn't did everything out here. I don't work with everybody out here. Yeah. So it was just time to move. So playing devil's advocate, because I said I, I asked people what they want to know about producing. Yeah. Is how do they approach? Obviously, you don't ask like, "Can you put me on? Can you listen to my music?" Like, what's the what is the etiquette for producers to be like, "Hey, I want to work with you, or I want to be mentored by you." As like, far as like, give me working with the artist. Mm, yeah. Um, with me, I just like I don't know. I try to like mess with artists before they blow up. 
So that's I, when you catch him. That's a sweet yeah, spot. Yeah, exactly. It's <laughs> yeah. called a sweet spot. So, like, I keep my ears in the streets all the time. I'm always on YouTube. I'm always on um, the gram. I'm always on um, just on platforms that showcase new talent to the basis. Because, you know, it's hard as hell to get. Once they get there, it's really hard to get in contact with them. But if you yep. had a relationship before they get in the dough, it's kind of easy to make that happen. Like, I got with Lucci before. He had even 5,000 followers, man, mm. on the gram. He got, like, two, three million now. So, you know, I actually booked him out here for a, for a gig. He stayed at my house. Um, Went to V Live, took me to V Live, you know, all kinds of stuff. Yeah. So I built a relationship with him. And that's how we got Key to the Streets because we built a relationship. Um, Variety, I went out there to work with Kevin Gates, but Atlantic, you know, everybody, Atlantic. Everyone signed to Atlantic, yeah. yeah <laughs> so I went out there originally working with Kevin Gates. He never showed up or whatever. And they had Roddy Rich in the studio, you know, before he even popped, before anything even dropped. I didn't know who was, who, who was going to be, but we built a good rapport, a good relationship, made a couple of tracks, and mm-hmm. I kept in touch with him. And that's how we got the Out the Mother record. Um, but with Travis Scott, I just pulled up, pulled up to the club. Mm, okay. Go to the club and like I already had <laughs> hits already, and um, it's cool like because I know some people that he know, and I was just telling him, you know, hey man, link us up. Yeah, I just want to get track with him. So I put up to the club. He was in this little section. They moved everybody out the way from me. I walked straight to the section and shit. And I was just like, bro, I don't want a picture. I just want to get your email. Send you this pack. And then like two weeks later, that's how we got Yosemite. Mm. Yeah. So it's you know it depends on the situation. Consistency. Yeah. Consistency kids. Is key. And you can't be afraid <laughs> to be told no. You, know you, can't, you can't be afraid T. I to be rejected. No, uh, T.I. just told me no at a two chains party. Hey. I, I, walked up the, I walked up there. Um, <laughs> him and Tiny walked up, you know, looking like loving hip-hop and shit. <laughs> and um, I was like, hey, man, I'm June. I started running down the hits. And he was like, man, now it's not the time. I was like, okay, cool. Yeah. You know, and I kept it moving, you know. You don't get shut down sometimes. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. But I guarantee you, if you see me again, I'm going to be popping shit. And he's going to be like, oh, man. You Remember that you? time? Yeah. yeah. And, you know, it is what it is, you know. Even though, like... We're told to be very uh, positive, the bigger person. Yeah. I love those moments when you can just be like, oh, remember that time yeah, yeah, you yeah. shitted on me? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> remember? Yeah. Like I said, you have to have tough skin. So yeah. You take this shit personal. <laughs> Motherfuckers go online and shit be tripping about themselves and stuff. So you got to, you know, take the good with the bad. You're going to be told no a lot more times. You're going to be told yes, but them yes is going to count way more than them no's. Yeah. On everything. Well, one, I love that you, thank you for coming up here. Yeah, thank you uh, for Such me. short notice. Hey, man. I was like, hey, man, why ain't you ain't been in my station? Hey, and I pulled the hell up. <laughs> I know, yeah. and he pulled the hell up within a few days' notice. But I know you said you have the restaurant opening. Yeah, in Denton. It's called Red's Cajun Kitchen. We're going to okay. be serving all kinds of seafood, you know what I'm saying, from crawfish to etouffee to, um, you know, shrimp boils, all that good stuff, you know. So crab. I can't go. I'm allergic. So. Oh, girl. You got a chicken's dish, though? I don't think we got no chicken, man. Oh, my God. Hey, You're trying to food. kill motherfuckers. We, have to, right? we, 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 might, we might have to make a, a Pacific dish for you. Okay. Then the Ashley plate. Yes. You know what I'm saying? The two E's at two Fay. Yeah, Ooh, no. that's hard. Chicken at Trademark. Right, hey, <laughs> right now. Tell my partners about that. But Chicken yeah, we opening up. It's in Denton. Mm-hmm. It's in right in the middle of um UNT University okay. of North Texas and the Texas Women University, and like probably 15 minutes up the street from TCU. So it's like in a good college spot. And we're just trying to take the college market of young kids. You know, the young women. Smart. Phenomenally. Yeah. But they love eating crawfish. And they love getting drunk. So Smart. We trying to tap into that. <laughs> <laughs> and then what else do you have? Anything upcoming musically? Oh, I got a lot of stuff coming up. Music. Yeah. I'm working with Two Chains. I'm working with Meek. I got okay. um, a dope song with Meek and Quavo. I don't know if it's going to be a single or not, but it's really hard. Okay. It's a movie. I got um got some places I landed with Beyonce, so I'm re- I'm hoping that's going to like really suffice. Because, you know, she records a thousand and one songs, so I hope I make the cut. But she picked up three or four for me, and I heard some of them on, over the phone. I heard some when I went to L.A. Got that going on. Um, working with a lot of people right now. Okay. I, but I want to surprise people. I like keeping, you know, just me and Travis got some new stuff coming out too. So, a whole lot of work on the way, man. So, can we expect Travis dropping another album? Oh, yeah. That's what okay. I'm They're working <laughs> okay. on it right now. Okay. They're working on it right now. Like I said, they hit me last week asking for some more stuff. Listen, they be an extra secret. We just waiting for Astro World Fest to get announced. Right. Like, me too. <laughs> like I, didn't go to, I didn't go to the last one. I was in LA for the last one. So, well, I want to pop up and see that, see what, how that, see how that go down. We're going to make sure you pop up. Well, thank you to my friend, June James. June, you a genius. Yeah, appreciate you. Appreciate you. <laughs> two E's, man. And where can they find you on IG, Twitter, all that? Man, you can find me on any social media platform at June the Genius, J-U-N-E-T-H-E for the J, J-E-N-I-U-S. That's June the Genius, man. Follow me ASAP and I'll follow you back. All right. See y'all in 93.7 The Beat. Ooh.